Hey Paint and Friends, welcome back to Pamela Gropi Art. Today we are going to do a really, really fun project. I wanted to do this for a while and it is a baby Highland cow. Didn't it turn out cute? It turned out cuter than I thought because I have been away from painting for probably six months and yeah, I was a little bit rusty, but I talk you through it. We just have fun. This is fun art, not fine art and just flow. Go with the flow. Do not expect yours to look like mine. We all have our own individual style. You can choose different colors of paints. You can use what you have, mix up, you know, custom colors. There is no hard and fast rules. So just have fun with it. I will have a drawing for you to download and use as a pattern. There's not too many details in it, so you can just kind of refer to either what I'm doing or do what I did, pull up a picture of a baby Highland cow and just kind of look at that to kind of get an indication. There, it's not perfection. So let go of that, just relax, have fun, and let's enjoy getting back into painting together. So let's get rolling on painting a baby Highland cow. Let's get a, a shot of the practice piece. I did this on brown paper. This is the paper, craft paper that I wrap or put on top of my painting table so you know I can just peel it off and whenever there's a bunch of marks on it. Now the calf, Highland calf, baby cow painting, I think I'm just going to do his head. I'm not going to try to do his body. Just so here is a little board. What is this called? Craft board. This is a 12 by 12 inch. I got this one at Walmart. Oh, I see it has the hangers on it. I didn't notice that. So we should paint it this way. <laughs> I was going to paint it going up and down, um, but now I think it's better. Excuse the shadows. My curtains are not working here. Not working. What am I saying? Excuse the shadows. I'm sure the sun will go around in a minute. Let me see if I can shift my table where it's a little bit more out. I have uh, plans to make some linen curtains for my uh, windows so I don't get that and or moved over to the north side of this building. Okay, that probably would be best. So here is my outline. It is just a rough sketch of our baby Highland cow. So, like I said before, I am so rusty I have not been able to get in here to paint in months and this was just something that really sparked something I wanted to do. So let me get it straight here. First of all, we're going to transfer the outline. I'm not going to do all of the details inside. I'm going to get kind of the out area, outside area, so that I can uh, base in the colors. Let me get this cleaned up. I know, I should be more organized and I'm, I'm not. So that is just the way I'm flying lately. It just seems like there's so much going on. I was using this for a palette. That's why this is here. It's actually a sign I painted on the other side, but I was in a hurry. I've been trying to clean out this studio and get it organized and I'm just not there yet. So I have transfer paper. This is not carbon paper, it's graphite. Carbon leaves like an oil that I have not found to be conducive to this. Um, whoops, I just went through the hole. This is a stylus. A lot of times I'll use a pen. I actually like using a pen because I can see where I've left off um, if I've missed a spot usually because I can see the ink. But I'm just going around with this stylus. This is a very small one tip. And I am transferring Graphite. Now this is graphite transfer paper. Let's see how well it's doing. Okay, you see it right up here? I didn't get that. So I'm going to continue on. So I tape it in place so that um, I can just put it right back down and it's all good. I'll just put some of these marks in here. They'll get covered up. And his eyes... Like I said, I am not going to do his body because I'm too lazy to kind of go that route where you have to do the shadowing and all of that. So this is just going to be a super easy, fun one. Now this 
board that I got. I got it at Walmart in the craft department, and I think it was like $7. I thought that was a really good price for something I didn't have to build. I do have instructions on building your own, if that's what you want to do. Let's see where we're at. Okay, this one, I didn't have that there. Not that it's that big of a deal. And I kind of did a dot here, so you kind of know where this is kind of going out from that center point all over. So, oh no, I didn't mean to do that. I did not mean to pull up his. The, the clear transfer makes it easy er to find. If you have to go back in and do more details, um, yeah, I think I got it on there in the right spot. I'm pretty sure. Okay, yeah. Don't don't pull it off the tape because you'll want to be able to lay it back down when after you've painted in the base coat, and then uh, you'll go back over some of the spots if you need the help. You can also just try to measure in, you know, to see where they're at if that's what you would rather do. Okay, so for the base coat, I rather liked the raw sienna. But you could also do something like the cafe latte. But on my uh, practice piece, it's just below here. Um, it's uh, I did them with raw sienna. And sometimes a little bit of burnt umber, like in the places that had some shadowing. And if you wanted to, you could even do the whole thing in burnt umber. It's, you know, there's no um, one way to do things. So I'm going to put in, I'm just going to use this board again as my paint palette. Now my burnt umber is very old, so you can see how gloppy it is on here. Let me pull it up here so you can see it better, and I'm going to try not to get in your way. Let me see if I can get it to focus right here on, okay, it's on spot focus, meaning that won't go change with my hand going in and out. I do hate that when I'm editing and it's going in and out as my hand moves. So let's see if I got that right. Okay, so I'm going to use a three-quarter inch Donna Dewberry one-stroke flat. I love her brushes. You get, well, I used to get the 10-pack for $15. I haven't gotten them in a while, um, so I don't know what they are but I've gotten them off of her website. I've also gotten them off of um, Amazon. So both places work. And uh, is that, let me stand and try to block that extra shadowing, or I could try put on the overhead light. I definitely will get my act together better, people. I'm sorry that I am just so disoriented, but I did, I did keep thinking I was gonna get things organized and putting off doing any more lessons until then and it just wasn't working so I just wanted to get in here jump in do something easy but cute and uh, paint so I hope you don't mind hope you don't mind that I'm a little discombobulated so let's get this I am just filling in with the raw sienna and I need to pull up a reference photo of Highland Cows. I don't have one with me right now. But when I did the demo or, you know, practice piece on the brown paper, I did. I did have. And so I do know that there is some darker shading. I'm just getting a touch of the burnt umber right in here in the ear like in the center of his ear. So I'll just put that in there now. Just tap it in. It's not anything you couldn't go over if you need to. So just tap it in kind of where you think a shadow would be on his ear. And I will look up a reference photo for everybody. Now I know down here along the bottom there was some shadowing, darker. Now you're gonna go in here and put his furry face in and all of that. So let's just focus on getting him filled in well. 
put in a little areas where you, you know, like it, when we have a reference photo, you can even pull up your own reference photo. It doesn't have to be an exact one. It'll give you an idea of where you would like to shade some of it. Don't worry about getting outside the lines. This is not rocket science. It's nothing that you have to worry about. Who cares if you need, if you want soft edges. So let's just get that little, they have little tufts here and there. So there, it's all good. It's going to absorb in this wood. So I'm going to work with that. On a canvas that has been um, gessoed, you may not get so much of it to absorb. And, you know, the wood could change the color of my paint a little bit. But we're just going for certain tones. It doesn't have to be the exact color. If you wanted to use burnt sienna, you could. You could use, uh, I'm using, like I said, the raw sienna. There's also cafe latte, which is a popular color within uh, the folk art for things that are tan or what have you. So there we go. We're going to let that dry and I'll blend this in a little bit because we're going to be doing a lot more colors on here. So we're not going to get too anxious about it. Okay, so let's let that dry and we'll come back and we will pull down the pattern and we'll put in the details like the eyes and what have you. Now, while I'm waiting, I could put in his horns. So they're gray and I'm just rinsing out my brush. I think I'll get a smaller brush just because I am so out of practice. Truthfully, it has been six months since I have really painted. So I'm out of practice. So I'm going to get a um, number 12 flat. This is also Donna Dewberry. This is one of her specialty ones. Um, but you can use any size that fits what you need to do because uh, a lot of times when I've been practicing a lot or painting a lot, I could have gone in with a larger brush. Oops, sorry. Now let's see, this is steel gray. Make sure it's well mixed. Steel gray. Um, you could use other grays and mix it. I have my paint colors that you can get in a kit and mix that I have. Um, it's the folk art. I guess it's a kit you could buy of certain colors on Amazon. And that works really well. I'm going to have to probably, so that these stand out, shade with a darker gray or add black to this. And because it blends in too much with the background to stand out. But just adding a touch of black or a darker gray, whatever you have. Let me see. I could even do the burnt umber with it. I'm not, I just had my black out here. All right, here's a little bit of back black. Okay, so I'm getting the gray on my brush and then I'm going to just put a touch of the black, work it in. Usually I would use licorice of the folk art. This is ceram coat, just black. And I'm just gonna go. You don't have to make a stark line. You can just chop some in there. And right along his head, sometimes it's darker. There we go. Soften that color a bit. Yeah, it's all good. It's not a perfect line, and I don't want it perfect. I want it to be choppy. Choppy, choppy. There, okay. So we got a little bit of the definition with the black on the edge. Corner of the brush, you see, you can barely see it there and just worked it in to the horn. Okay, so horn, we've got the back painting in or the um, base coat of his face in the raw umber. 
oh, not raw umber, I'm sorry, raw sienna, and we are gonna let it dry. I can pull over my blow dryer and blow dry that. Okay, so this is dry. So now, carefully, I'm gonna lay this back down over it. Make sure I'm within. And then I'm gonna do, put in some of the details, like his eyes. Now I wanted to point out to you, you notice that this is not even. It, it's blotchy. That's great. We want the texture. We want the interest. We don't want it just one solid blocky color. So there we go. We're going to do now, like I said, the details. We'll put in the eyes. Now there's slats in this and I didn't want to go through the through it perforate the paper at all. So just follow where you know you're going to need some help with the details. Now this little part or his eye that kind of makes him look mad so I'm going to be careful with that when I paint it so I think that is all of the details maybe this kind of goes up this way so I'm just going to give an indication we'll cover those here's the circle yeah I think we're good on that and so this is like coming down here okay so I think we have all of the details in there I don't know if you can see that, but you see how it goes. It makes him look mad, huh? All right, so we go with his eyes, and I did it again. I pulled off the paper here. Let me see if I can put it back on there just in case there's something I mess up and I need to draw the detail again, like block it out. So push it up like that out of the way. Now with the transfer paper, it's not quite as important because you can see through it. Um, and then kind of centered on there. But uh, if you have a solid piece of paper to do that with, then it is uh, more important. So I'm gonna get a smaller brush. This one is a six. You could also do, you know, an eight, whatever fits your hand or your style. As I said, I'm a bit rusty, so I am going to play it safe. I'm getting a little burnt umber and black. I don't want it to be stark, stark black. So I wanna get the burnt umber on the brush and I'm just going to go put in the nostrils. You of course could do this with a round brush and I want this to come to the point up there. The same, it's kind of a circle. It's almost like a, a comma upside down. And over here, this spot, it, it's kind of uh, lighter so it's not quite as dark. And I'll just kind of make that more of a teardrop. I need to make a point on my brush. Now there's no hard and fast rules. And if you make a mistake, you can always go over it. So this is kind of round. I always say kind of. These are rather round, not completely round. But when you put on his little eyelashes and other things, it will give it more of the shape. And you don't have to be perfect. You know, some of them, they actually have the hair coming over one eye. Um, usually when they're younger, they don't have as much of that. Um, so it, the hair is shorter yet, and it gets longer as they age, the mature. So there are the eyes, and I will get a little bit of the this color in here. So I want a darker than the back drop, but I don't want quite black or very dark brown. And that's where I'm just going to kind of go. Now again, I'm winging this here. I shouldn't say winging it. I'm just trying to kind of look, I need to go get my reference photo and work from that too. Now there's a little 
like triangle piece. I probably should get a liner to do this because I am not as proficient as I could be if I've painted a lot. I'm out of practice, but we're getting it. We're just going to work on this together. My imperfection may encourage you not to be perfect and not to worry about things. If it doesn't look like it's coming together, don't get frustrated. It eventually does. And you know what? Even with this, especially with this, I could sand it off and start over if that's what I needed to do. So, <clears throat> I'm trying to think of, I'm looking at my piece I painted down here below this board in how I do these little details. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't tell you. I went and got a script liner. This is a number two script liner. You can use whichever kind fits your need. Now this, I'm just going to go over it. I'm probably going to do this lighter when I start putting in the hair, uh, all the hair. Let's see. And I'm debating on just using a flat brush or to get myself, I have a rake brush and I need to find it, or an old scruffy brush that leaves kind of the scruffy ends and not have it be perfect. Now I need to add a little bit of dark in this area. So I need some of the burnt umber, but I don't want it to be stark. So I'm going to add water and make this a watery. So when I push it in there, it's very, it's just a shading. It's not a stark, stark color. And then when we do his hair over it, some of that dark will show through. Alrighty. So let's leave it at that. Let that dry. I'm going to go get my reference picture photograph to work from better. I'll share that with you and then we'll proceed. So hopefully you'll be able to see this. But I went out to Pinterest and here is a picture of a baby Highland cow. And it's not exactly like my drawing, but we can get a kind of an idea of, you see how it's darker in his ear, in inner ear, and then, you know, where it is right around here and how his nose is lighter right there and how it goes up, but it's not perfectly black. So I need to lighten his nostrils a little bit. His eyes are pretty dark, but you see how it's lighter over his lids where I had put a darker color. But it just gives you an idea how to go in and to, you know, give them some details. Now, I'm not, like I said, mine is not exactly the same, but it's close enough. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to mix a little bit of gray, maybe. The gray has a little bit of blue in it. Let's see if it, what color it makes. And it's darker than outside. No, that's not going to make a good color. Well, maybe it is. But it's not as dark as I have it. And not that it would matter, because on my little drawing, it is darker, and it looks fine. But let's just go in and lighten that up, but make sure it's darker than this. Now, on the photograph, you see around his muzzle, it is the raw sienna color. And I will leave that, that color, and even maybe bring it in a little bit more. But the inner side is kind of a peachy color. But you know what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to go in either with camel, like you would with camel, or with linen. Linen is lighter. I think I will go in with a little touch of camel. This is linen. Let me grab the camel. Oh, that camel's not been opened. Hmm. I wonder if I have another one here. Let's see. Let me pardon my rich yellow ochre. Oh, maybe I'll just go ahead and use that one. Or I'll just make do with the linen and mix it with the... My brush is still dirty. Uh, I didn't clean it out. Sometimes I'll wipe them out. But I'll just see what this does. If it's too light, I can add a little bit more of the raw sienna in it and make that peachy color. Yeah, that makes a peachy color. 
I got a lot on my brush. So I'm going to be very careful. Now actually, on here, I'm looking at it. You see how it comes up his nostrils? It comes across to the top of the nostrils here. And so that's what I'm going to do. I don't know, my drawing was a little off, but that's okay. We're just going to do according to the picture and fill it in. Now it actually comes underneath the nostril and about halfway through and it stops. Comes up over his lip. I'm glad I went and got the picture to follow along with. Now my drawing was done quickly, so... Okay, so there's that one. That part. Now his mouth, which I have it slightly open, but in this it's closed. So I'm just going to go ahead with it closed. So I'm going to bring this down. And then I'll get some of the black on my brush. Work it in so it's dark, but lighter than dark, um, dark black. Now my brush might be getting a little thick. And so I'll just test it out. Yep, that works for me. That works good. Now it doesn't go all the way to the side. So I'm going to now go over the lines here with the raw sienna. Now, this raw sienna, this part looks darker than this part. Well, that is going to change, or on ours, this is going to change. We're going to put a lighter color in for the hair. We're not going to have them quite this color. So I'm going to do like the linen or the cafe latte to put in his hair. So this part around his muzzle will be stay this raw sienna color. And um, so I'm just going to go and I'm going to go over the lines that I had created for his mouth. And then go right up under his mouth. And now I've got, uh, got some of that black in there. So I need some more of the mouth color because I kind of obscured his mouth. It kind of makes him look sad with it turning down, but that's the way it looks in the picture. I guess I could do it more straight, and then it just looks solemn and not sad. Okay. So I'm going to wipe out my brush. So I have a towel on here next to me, and I just wipe out the brush when I want to take out some of the dark, and I want to keep it the raw sienna color. So there we go. I don't want to obscure this line around here, because when I put on my fur, I want to make sure I'm keeping that around there, this color. Now, it is a little darker around here, but not as dark as that. So it's a little bit, let's work in a little bit of the color here, almost like the mouth color. So right in here, it's lighter, but not as, it's darker than the surrounding, but not as dark as the rest. So this kind of goes up. Now, don't get too caught up. Sometimes I will get caught up in the details, so don't do that. Get too tied up with it. I tell you that, and then I go back and I work a little bit more. A little bit darker. Okay. All right. We're good there. Now this isn't quite a peachy tone, but that's okay. We're not going with perfection, and lighting can change things. Now, over his eye, it shows it a bit lighter in my, my photograph. Or over the lid there.
go phone, don't turn off on me there. Wanna keep this rounder. Just because he's cuter with rounder eyes. It makes him softer. Okay. Alrighty. You know what? Now we can start some of the details. I am going to hunt down, I think, a rake brush. And we'll go from there. So here is, this is a feather brush, and this is just an old brush that's gotten scruffy, and you see the ends are frayed and whatever. So I'm going to pull up. Now on my demo, I just did the edge of a flat brush, and then that's what I determined. I wanted to try it with um, a feather brush or one of these scruffy brushes. So I'm just going to get some on my scruffy brush, and I'm going to see how that, see it leaves it frayed on the ends. I mean, I might be getting too close because I had it. But you see, see the little frayed ends there? But it's too flat and wide, so that might work around some areas, but when I want a finer tip, I did turn it on edge and you see how it does splay. So I'll put that in water and I'll try it with the feather brush. So I'm getting a similar effect. So I can use either one. Now I'm going to start, I think, out here. You can start wherever you want. But in my demo picture below here, uh, let me get a picture of that. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a spot right here that I'm working out from, but first there's like a line from here that I am working from, so as far as doing some. But around the outside edges, let me try some coffee latte. Um, I did, I just, like I said, I did it with the flat brush, but I'm going to try it. So here's the coffee latte. You see it's not quite as dark as the raw sienna, and it's a little muted. And then I have the linen, and what else other color? Oh, parchment. Parchment might work too. Let me see what the difference between linen and parchment is. Parchment is even lighter, so I can use that for some highlighting. Okay, so for around the edges, let's first try this brush. This is my scruffy brush, like an old brush that's just gotten worn, well worn. Load the tips. I'm loading it with the coffee latte, and I just want to do some tufts of fur. Let me look at my picture. Oh yeah, he has got tufts coming out from his ears, and see the it makes the edges. You can see the edges are frayed. Is it light enough? Yeah, it's light enough. And now at first it starts going this way. And then it starts going out. And I'm flicking my brush. To, so those edges leave some little streaks around. Now we're going to build. And what I mean by build is we're going to do the outside edges first. And then we'll go work in from there. Now this may not work because on the other one I just did the flat brush and went with it. So. Just do what you feel. Don't try to get too far. Try not to get too far. I say things so backwards sometimes. So I am going to, I think, go down along his chin a little bit. Now you see how it's darker. I'm trying to stay. I don't want to get too far off of his skin. I don't want him to be super long haired. I'm trying to follow. There's a pattern to the hair. It's not just, you know, straight or just all 
flicking out. It goes down and around his mouth. See, I'm too far out there. I'm getting too carried away. Hopefully that's light enough, it won't be that big of a deal. Now, in this picture, you see around his ears and stuff right there, it's darker. So I'm going to go in with a little bit of burnt umber. I didn't clean my brush, and I'm going to make that darker. And even up here along the head. Okay. Friends, we got cut off. My battery died, but that's okay. I needed a break. So here we are so far, and I think I like the effect of my scruffy brush as far as making his furry. <laughs> what is it on cows? Is it called fur? Cowhide uh, around on the edges. Let me see if the lighting is good in here. It's a dark, rainy day, and I didn't want to turn on the overhead light because it can be kind of garish. So when I say I'm looking at my reference painting, let me move you down here. This is what I'm talking about right here. And I just loved how he turned out. And that's what I'm kind of going with, partially. So over here is where we're at so far. And here is a picture. So I kind of get the idea of shadowing around the face. Whoops. And all of that. So this is not what the pattern was drawn from. This is just something I pulled up off Pinterest to refer to. So I may have mentioned this before, but I am very rusty. I haven't been out here doing this for a while. So I'm just getting my bearings along as I'm doing this tutorial. And I hope you don't mind. So over here on my palette, which is kind of muffed up, this is the back of a sign I painted. So right here I have coffee latte. This is camel. And this is linen. So on my practice piece, you see here, where I did his hair. I did that with a flat brush. And I'm going to go back in and do that again. So I'm going to leave off on his nozzle right now, and or nose, and I'm going to work on his hair. So let me get my brush, find my flat brush I had. I had a number 12 flat. This is the specialty brush, but you can do the one that's green of the Donna Dewberry brush or whichever. I also like low Cornell brushes. Let me see if I have one over here. Low Cornell, see this brand. So those also work. Um, but right now I have my 12 flat. And what I'm going to go in and do is I'm going to load up with the camel and with the, um, what was the camel? No, that was coffee latte and camel. That's right. So I'm going to make the dot right here. I kind of put the dot right there. And it's rather a kind of a straight line. And I'm going to pull this down a little bit. I'm reaching far for this. So I'm just going to start where it would be from the back, meaning you're going to work forward. So back here, I'm just going to put some. Now, if you wanted the dark to be the darker color, the coffee latte, you would lead you would lead with the lighter and drag the darker, and that makes the darker pr more prominent. It doesn't make sense, but I guess maybe it does because you're leaning more heavily on the heel of the brush, which back here is the heel. So I'm just kind of going along and putting in his tufts of hair, and it doesn't have to be exact. You're going for an effect. You're not going for perfection. You can even go in here on his ear. Keep loading your brush as you feel the need to. And go in this direction. I'm not as proficient, but it doesn't matter. This is fun art. This isn't fine art. You don't have to worry about anybody critiquing your work. You're just having fun with it. That's all. And if you wanted to add in some more of the burnt sienna or even the burnt umber, you could do that for a little contrast. But you see, I want some of the dark showing through. 
Uh oh, I loaded my brush wrong. Sometimes you'll do that. So I'm just looking at this, my painting below. And even if you need to, well, I didn't put it on there, did I? I didn't put a lot of the details. Let me get out some of the raw sienna just to work with that in there too. Because down in the middle, right along here, it's darker on my photograph. And so you want to keep that a little bit darker. You notice I turned my brush. And in the center here, let me pull you back. Do you see how it goes out and these go down and those are going up? So this is like almost like a, like a spider coming off there. And that's kind of the effect we want there. At least I do. Not all of them, like, let's look at the reference photo. You see, he doesn't really have that. His is kind of real weird here and more of the lines going that direction. You see these going down on, on the top part of this ear, but it, the tufts are on the bottom side of that ear. So there's no one way to do it. If you look at another picture, it'll look quite different. So now I had the cafe latte and I put a little bit of the, um, raw sienna in it and my brush is getting a little fat so what I'm going to do when your brush starts holding too much paint and it's not keeping us a, a fine edge you take a paper towel or you can take a rag that you may be using I'll grab a paper towel and just pinch the paint out and then you see has a point again and then reload your brush so just I'm going to reload with the camel and the coffee latte and I'm just going to bring those stripes down. Now I really should be going all the way around before I get too concentrated in the center. So we'll leave that little bit there and we will bring some of these over here, bring it over the center there. You want to add a little depth, you get a little more of the burnt, a raw sienna, I almost said burnt sienna. And yeah, I'm just going to go around the edges. And just have fun with it. Now, these are going to overlap these, so I need to finish these and how it's going along there and you see how that's overlapping those so just be mindful you're working from the back to the front and you want your brush strokes to mimic that don't get too heavy-handed too thick because you're going to come in with some a little bit of lighter colors and if you want to put some depth back in there you could even add some more burnt umber. So I'm going to look at another picture just for the hay of it. So on the back side of his eyes, it's kind of going to or feathering out from the eye. So I've got my scruffy brush and I'm double loading it. This one will not keep an edge and that's what makes it scruffy. So then I'm gonna just kind of take these out from the eye towards the ear. And then these Now I did have a little bit more, like this, the guy uh, below here, his face is a little bit fatter, so I'm going to take some more of this scruffy stuff out. And we'll just... Now I can come back in for the details of his eyes, but it's going to show through. Now, as I said, I'm rusty. This is like one of my first paintings I have done in six months. Can you believe that? 
it, I've been so busy with my garden blog, etc., that I just haven't had a chance to paint. And that's not good because, you know, painting is a really a relaxing, very relaxing, blood pressure lowering activity, and I need that. Okay, you see how he's coming together? He's coming together really nicely. So I'm back with my flat brush. I'm trying to remember to show and tell you <laughs> what I'm going to do. This is the one that needs to keep its edge. And I am going to lead with the lighter side this time. You'll see how much lighter. It's the same colors. And this one goes up and around from there. And then I have the linen, which is even lighter. So we're going to add the two lighter colors. And we're really going to put some highlights in there. Up here as well, just a few. And you're going to overlap some of the other strokes with some of the highlights. I got a wonky one there that I'm not liking. So I'm going to get two dark colors on here, darker, and I'm going to blend that in. Now be careful to not to overwork it. I do have a tendency to do that. Step back, take a breath, take a good look. The lighting in here is not that great because it's rainy out and so I'm not able to really get a really good look at it, but I think I'm, I'm liking what's happening here. So down around his muff, around here and here. This is what I've got to figure out how I want to give it texture without it being, I don't know, what do you want to call it? Too much over the top. Okay, that was burnt sienna. You know what? I'm going to load burnt sienna on one side of my brush and a raw sienna, I'm sorry, and the coffee latte on the other. And we're just going to give that feathery type strokes coming out from his muzzle. And let that kind of blend in and see how I, what I think about that. Because it's not perfectly smooth, but it's not also not super furry. So let me take put in a little bit of, now I may totally decide that this is not what I want to do. So let me get this kind of, no, that's not going to work. I am going to get me some burnt umber, burnt umber. Yeah, see on his muzzle here, I did completely different, but it looks like a pig doesn't look like a calf. And in my p photograph, which I will share with you, you see how his muzzle around here is, did it again, I shouldn't touch it, is a lighter, a, a darker brown. It's the same as the raw sienna, but it stands out where everything else is a little bit lighter. And maybe that's it. Maybe I need to Put some more of that raw sienna around out here. And then go in with the lighter color. So here you guys are getting to see how I talk my way through these things and try to figure out what it is I want. Now the definition of his chin is still under there. So I'm kind of obscuring the hard line around his muzzle. And, yeah, this kind of comes down over that there. There we go. Yeah, we're trying to, we don't want it too harsh a lines where it's coming off of his ears. So, all right, so you see how I have the lines here, but I don't have them over there. The brush strokes, I call them just lines. We're going to fix that. I'm going to go in with the camel and the coffee latte, and we'll go ahead and 
put some of those in. Yep, we don't want to obscure the shadowing there of the burnt umber. And even if we had, we could kind of go in and fix that with a little touch more. All right. So again, we're not going for perfection here. We're just trying to get our calf. Now, I'm thinking the raw umber is just a little too red. And here I am doing exactly what I tell you not to do, not overwork it, but I'm gonna go in with just the cafe latte and get it on my brush. Still have, my brush is on the damp side, so let's hope it's not gonna lift any paint. I just wanna to tone down that raw umber a bit. Tone it down, I can even go up here where this is. Yeah, he's looking cuter. Looking cuter. Yeah, and I like this, there's no hard lines, but you're getting the shape of his muzzle. So maybe if I turn the light up here for myself, I'd get more, but hmm. I'm starting to make it the same color as the surround, so I don't want that. So more coffee latte. Now definitely this in here is that lighter color. Okay, I'm good with that. Now I'm gonna get out some burnt umber. Hopefully it's right here. I'm not seeing it. Okay, oh yeah, here it is. Now again, and I have to remind myself as well, don't go for perfection. And sometimes walking away and then coming back is good. So right underneath his mouth, I'm going to get some coffee latte mixed into this burnt umber. Or I could water it down, but right under his mouth, we want it a little darker. Yeah, a little darker. That's working. That is working. Okay. A little darker, maybe even a little around the edges. Because you see on our reference, see around the edges of his muzzle there, it's a little bit darker. Touched it again, trying not to. So I'm going to do the same. I rinse up my brush a bit, touch into the burnt umber, get a little bit on my brush, mix it into the coffee latte so it is not a super dark brown. But yeah, just kind of work around the muzzle area just to shadow it. Yep, blends in. It's not really a hard line. And then that center, I think, is more of the camel. No, did I say camel? Yes, it is camel, huh? Yeah. And just brush that in there. Almost like he has a mustache. You know what, I'm looking at the picture and there's even a tiny, let's see if I can drag it, tiny bit under his mouth. All right. Well, I'm having fun with this. It's starting to just come together, feel right. And uh, yeah, I was worried because like I said, I'm so rusty. And this is a little bit more I don't know, I wouldn't say uh, complicated, but it's a little bit different than painting flowers or stuff like that. So it was a little, you know, I was expanding my field here. So I'm, let me give them a little bit. Now that looks good, just a brown. Now I'm gonna go in and work on his eyes a little bit. And I like them even though yeah, they're, oh, they look pretty round in my photograph. I'm gonna give them a little bit more. I 
want them to really stand out. And then right over the top, it shows it a little bit lighter in my photograph. So I'm getting, my brush is very damp, but not wet. It's not dripping. And it's a little bit lighter over his eyes. So because it's thin, the paint, because the brush was so damp. Yeah, that's good. Good, good, good. All right. Now we'll give it a little dot, give it a little life, or a little lightness. It looks like I didn't really need the linen. I'm getting barely a touch on my corner. I mean, barely. You could do this with a stylus or whatever, but the paint's still wet. So I'm just giving it, there's some sh uh, highlights in his eyes in the photograph. So it just, you want it to just show touch. You don't want it to be too light. Whoop, got a little bit too much there, but you know, it works. It works. I'm liking it. So I'm looking up here and I can find my number 12 again. What did I do with it? I just had, oh, over here. So we are going to bring in, you know what, I'm going to use my scruffy brush again. I, I keep looking at my photograph and right along here, he's got more of the, is it camel? The camel color. And then I get a little coffee latte on there too. Got it double going here. Double going. Now I want to just be very light, very light. I notice that it's got some highlights, lighter color coming down. Yep. And it's not right up to his muzzle. I guess that's what you call it. Yeah. So it's, it's blending in with up there but it's not exactly the same color. But you've got the lights in there. All right, I'm loving it. Love, love, loving it. Now I'm gonna go into the linen and the camel. Linen and camel, work it into my brush, and I'm just going to add some more highlights from his little center part. And now on my photograph, it doesn't show this. It doesn't have this part of him. So I can even throw in a little, oh, it's a little stark. Let me get some coffee latte. Bring that in down, a, bring it down a tad. Okay. I love them. Love, love, love them. And I think I'm going to be good with that. Now I could come in to add some light lashes along here, but I don't need them. We can leave him at this point and be happy with him, don't you think? Is there anything I'm missing? There's something a little bit different about this eye. Maybe he needs a little, whoops, got some black in there. Well, that's what happens when you try to overdo it. Now let me, there, we'll just blend that in there a little bit, like he's got a little bit of hair going over his eye. And there we have our happy little cow. Now, you know, I keep wanting to tweak with him, tweak him and do little things, but I'm going to stop. I am going to walk away and come back. Now, along here in my photograph, there's a definite, definite line there. So I'm gonna to have to decide whether I want to make that line be there or if I want to just walk away and leave it alone. Okay, I've got a little burnt umber on my scruffy brush and just, it's, the scruffy brush is very wet. So I'm making a soft hint of a line there to give it a little more definition. Okay. That works, that does work. So I wanted that definition. And 
I think we're good. Now, see, there's a little bright dot down underneath this eye when there's not over here, but this one, and his head's kind of tilted, and that's okay. Um, I didn't want him to be direct on. Now, I'm not using white for this. I'm using just the linen to give him that little eye spark. So, okay, so here is our Highland cow, baby cow. And then here is my practice piece. Do you see how you could have the exact same pattern and get something that looks very, very different? So if yours does not match mine, I want you to be okay with that. I want you to know that that is perfectly fine and that it does not need to match mine to be good. All right. We are doing good. Okay, let's stop. I know, I keep saying that. Alrighty, I'm loving it. Well, I, I will also have a blog post where I show the step-by-step -step of this and um, written instructions in case you want to follow along that way. So, happy painting. <laughs> so that was our painting tutorial for our baby Highland cow. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you'll come on back for the next painting tutorial. I have no idea what I'm gonna paint. I am just going with the flow of what feels good and that's the way to really get enjoyment from your paintings. All right.